I'm here with Dr. Romano to do a coin problem for the DAP. Hi, I'm Dr. Romano. I'm professor of organic chemistry and the creator of the DAP Destroyer and the Orgo Man products. We're going to do a question today that is very important for the DAT exam on coins. So I'm going to let Professor Blois solve the problem and show you the methodology on the way you're going to go about doing problems on coins. All right, Professor, it's all yours. Okay, Leslie, this is a standard problem you'll see on the DAT. Coin problems. Let's just read it together. Bob has 23 coins in pennies and nickels, worth a total of 47 cents. How many pennies does Bob have? Well, first let's assign a variable to the number of pennies. Let's say P represents the number of pennies and N represents the number of nickels. If we make that assignment, we know what? We know that the number of pennies plus the number of nickels is 23. Okay. There we go. Now, uh, we have two variables, and in mathematics, that means we need two independent equations to solve that. So now let's get another equation equating the value of the money that we have. Well, let's see. We have pennies, which are worth one cent each, so I'll multiply P by one, which is really not necessary, and then I'll multiply N by five, because that will be the number of the, the value of those n nickels. However many nickels you have, multiply by five. That's how many cents you have. Then I'm going to equate this to, I'm going to lose the decimal point. We're going to deal with pennies. N, a P plus 5N is equal to 47. There are my two equations, totally solvable. How am I going to solve this? Well, one way I can do this, I can take the opportunity of uh, solving for P in each case, simultaneous equations. Uh, for the, from the first equation, I can see that P is equal to 23 minus n. From the second equation, I can see that p is equal to 47 minus 5n. Since p is equal to p, I can set those two equations equal to each other. 23 minus n equals 47 minus 5n. Let's do some mental algebra. If I add 5n to both sides, I'll get 4n. If I subtract 23 from both sides, what will I get? 24. Divide both sides by 4, and I get n is equal to 6. Okay, well, we know there's 6 nickels. If there's a total of 23 coins, I know that the number of pennies has to be 17. 23 minus 6 is 17. Okay, solved. All right, now let's go to a second coin problem involving three different denominations. Okay, let's read the, the problem first. Jamie has 12 coins consisting of nickels, dimes, and quarters worth a total value of $1.50. If the number of nickels is the same as the number of quarters, how many dimes does Jamie have? Well, we want, we're probably going to wind up solving for nickels, dimes, and quarters. So let's just assign a value for the number of nickels, which is going to be N. Right, the number of uh, dimes, which is D, and the number of quarters, which is Q. We know the total number of coins is 12, so I know that N plus D plus Q is equal to 12. Then we're going to do our value uh, expression. What's the value? The, the value of the three coins is $1.50 or 150 cents. Well, for each nickel I have, I have 5N cents. For each dime I have, I have 10 D cents. For each quarter I have, I have 25 Q cents. All right? Okay, now, in this case, we have three unknowns and only two independent equations. Mathematics tells us if there's three unknowns, we need three independent equations in order to solve this. So we have to look in the problem to see if there's an opportunity to write a third equation. There has to be. Okay, here we are. The number of nickels is the same as the number of quarters. All right. So we have this. N is equal to Q. Bingo. There, here are our three independent equations, and we have three unknowns. Let's go and solve it. How are we going to solve this? Well, since N is equal to Q, I can rewrite each of these equations and, uh, by replacing N with Q. Like the first equation, since, the number, since N is equal to Q, I can write this as Q plus D plus Q, which is 2Q plus D, and that equals to 12. In the second equation, I can replace N with Q again. So this is going to be 5Q plus 10D plus 25Q, and that's going to be equal to 150. If I add those two together, 5Q plus 25Q 
is 30Q. So 30Q plus 10D equals 150. In fact, I can see that all these, the three terms can be divide, are multiples of 10. I can divide them by 10. This can become 3Q plus 1D equals 15. All right, um, so here, I here are my equations uh, that I can use to solve. How about if I take these two equations? I notice that it, very available to me is solving for D in each case. D from, from the first equation up there, I can see that D is equal to 12 minus 2Q. And from this equation, I can see that D is equal to 15 minus 3Q, okay? So we set those two equations equal to each other because they're both equal to D. Let's do a little mental uh, algebra here. Add 3Q to both sides, I get Q. Subtract 12 from both sides, I get Q is equal to 3. Well, we know how many quarters he has. He has three quarters. The number of quarters equals the number of nickels. So N is also equal to 3. He has a total of 12 coins. Well, six of the coins are accounted for by the number of quarters and nickels. Therefore, the number of dimes has to be six, so the total adds up to 12. So how many dimes does Jamie have? Six. And there we are. Okay, I hope this gives you a good idea on how to work through these problems. You need to practice them and get speed up. All right, Professor, thank you very much. You're welcome. We'll be doing some more down the road. Okay, good luck to you. Bye-bye.